Hi everyone, it's Lindy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about what exactly I would do differently if I were starting over on eBay today. So I've been an eBay seller for well over a decade now, and for the last four years, I have been a full-time work-from-home eBay seller. And I often think to myself, what exactly would I do differently if I was starting as a reseller today as opposed to 14 years ago? Because over the last 14 years of reselling, I have changed what I am doing so many times I lost count. And because I've been a reseller for so long, I always like to give the most practical advice that I can to anyone just starting their reseller journey. So I have come down with a list of all of the items that I would do differently if I were starting over today as opposed to years ago. So hopefully this video can save you a lot of time and money and help jumpstart your reselling business. The first thing that I would not have bought in the very beginning is a lighting kit and an expensive light setup. So if you go on social media and you're following people in the reselling community, you'll see lots of people posting pictures of their workspaces. You might see lots of lighting kits or a fancy setup. You'll see big umbrella lights or box lights. You'll see a whole bunch of fancy equipment that they are using to take the best possible photos of their merchandise for selling online. But in all actuality, all of that equipment is not really necessary. And going along with that, a lot of people will spend a lot of money on fancy backdrops and then also poles and clamps to actually hang those backdrops to create this huge elaborate photography studio just to take photos of items for eBay. But in my experience, what I have found is that a 50 cent piece of white poster board from Walmart or a 25 cent piece of scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby will both do the same trick as a fancy big backdrop. And it takes up a lot less space and costs a lot less money. And then when it comes to the lighting kits, a lot of people don't know that using natural light, like sunlight, creates the same kind of brightness effect. If you can take photos near a window in the brightest part of the day, that could be sufficient for adequate lighting. Or if you don't have an area where you can get natural sunlight, you could use something as simple as a lamp or a clamp lamp, which is actually what I personally use. I have two different workspaces. I have the office where I'm currently sitting, and then I also have an upstairs workspace so that I can get listings done on the main floor of my house when my kids are home. I don't have a fancy lighting setup up there. I actually have a light that is clamped to a shelf. It was like $8. Literally just have a daylight bulb in there and I just switch it on, I put a piece of scrapbook paper on my desk and I snap photos of it. Really doesn't have to be high tech. And if you absolutely feel like you need a better lighting setup, I highly recommend a ring light. I'm actually filming with my ring light right now in front of me, and it works beautifully for taking photographs for eBay as well. It does not take up a lot of space. You can tune the brightness up or down depending on your need, and it's fairly inexpensive. The one I'm using right now was about $70 on Amazon. I'll go ahead and link it down in the video description if you wanna check it out for yourself but it's very affordable and it does not take up nearly as much space as the really big light kits that you see a lot of sellers using. So you absolutely do not need to spend hundreds of dollars for lighting equipment and backdrops just to photograph items for eBay. There are plenty of cheaper alternatives that I personally use now. As a matter of fact, the expensive backdrops that I used to have as well as the setup to hang those backdrops I have since gotten rid of because they just took up so much space. It was more of an inconvenience and an annoyance to use them. And that was money that I just 
wasted. It's money that I could have spent on more inventory. So hopefully me telling you this now will save you that money and you could take that money and go buy stuff to resell. And then in that same vein is you do not need to go buy a fancy camera. When I first started my reselling journey, I needed something to take photos with because back when I had first started reselling, there was no smartphones. There was no smartphone that had a good enough camera that you could take photos and upload them directly to eBay, which is exactly what I do now. So if I had a to do over again, if I were starting over today, I would not have spent that money on a camera just so that I could take photographs of items for eBay to have them on that little memory card to then plug them into my computer and upload them to the eBay site. No, that's too much work. Just use your phone that has a perfectly acceptable camera and use your phone to take photos and upload them immediately to your listings through the eBay app. I actually have a video that I just put together for all of you. I will link it up here. It is all about how I do my listings so quickly. And again, that has come from years of practicing how to do my listings in the most efficient ways possible. I have found that doing my listings in particular batches really speeds up the listing process. And one of those batches is actually taking photographs from my phone and uploading them directly into the listings through the eBay app. So again, check out that video on how to create speedy listings. I'll link it up there, but I just use my phone now. The next thing I would do differently is not worry about lengthy, detailed descriptions. And I know that that sounds counterproductive because you need to have details in your listing. So let me elaborate. What I mean is I spent way too much time early on in my reselling career trying to figure out how to have these long, beautiful, professional looking descriptions that had a fancy template and I had my return policy stated in there. I had my payment policy. I had my shipping policy. I had all these policies just cluttering up the item description. And realistically, all of that is completely unnecessary. You only want to have necessary information in your descriptions. It doesn't need to be something that's overly detailed. You don't need to have company policies in there. You don't have to worry about having a fancy template layout with flashing lights. None of that is necessary. You basically need aerial font at maybe a size 14 or 18 and that's it. You just want to tell them what your item is, hit on the most significant details that they need to know about your item, and then move on. And what eBay themselves has told me in the past that long descriptions can actually deter buyers because they don't want to have to read through all of that information just to get to the meat of the information that they need about the item they're looking to buy. All the rest of it is just fluff. It doesn't need to be there. Something else that I didn't realize in the beginning that I know now that I would do differently if I were starting over today is I would absolutely have some sort of activity going in my eBay store every single day. So it is not crucial for you to list brand new items in your eBay store on a daily basis, but in my experience, it is extremely crucial for you to have some sort of activity daily in your eBay store. So even if you're not listing something brand new to the platform, you at least need to do something that shows the eBay site that you are an active seller. That could be something like revising old listings, you could tweak your price, you could end a listing that maybe hasn't sold and relist it to kind of give the eBay algorithm an idea that there's maybe some fresh things going up in your eBay store. You could pay your eBay invoice. You could leave feedback for buyers. You could do shipping. Do something every single day to show eBay you're an active seller. In the very beginning of my reselling career on the eBay platform, I would simply list things and and walk away. 
And then I would wonder why there was little to no traffic on my items. I had no idea that a lack of activity in my eBay store was actually holding up my sales. It was only after years of selling on the eBay platform and consistently being active on a daily basis that showed me it was that activity that is actually driving traffic to your merchandise on eBay. So if I were starting over today, I would make sure that no matter what, I am actively doing something on the eBay site, even if I'm not listing new merchandise for sale. And if you're not exactly sure what kind of activity constitutes being an active seller, I do have some videos all about how to start triggering sales in your eBay store with activity. I'll link that video up here if you wanna go watch it when this video is over. But in that video, I talk about all of the little detailed things that you can do to be an active seller on the platform and hopefully start triggering some results when it comes to your sales. Something else that I would be doing differently if I were starting over today is I would be focusing more on my own research rather than trusting what other people told me were selling well. So right now, social media is a wonderful teaching tool for all of us to share information. But unfortunately, because there are so many people sharing knowledge, we don't really feel like we need to do our own research. We feel like we can just take other people's words for it. And years ago, I was basing what I was selling and how I was selling it based off of what other people were doing. I spent way too much time taking other people's words for things and not doing my own research. And when I'm talking about research, I'm talking about product research, brand research, company research, research in all ways, whether it's whether or not to buy from a certain company or whether or not to sell in a certain category or to try to sell a particular kind of item at all. I was listening to way too many people without doing my own research and trying things out myself. Because when push come to shove, this is your business and what sells for me might not sell for you and what sells for you might not sell for me. It is up to us to do our own research and make our own best judgments based on the research we have personally done without just taking someone's word for it. So just just because someone on social media tells you it's a good idea to buy something, make sure to do your own research. Don't just take their word for it and go buy it because that can end up costing you a lot of time and money and if you do your own research, it helps hone your craft a little bit better. Something else that I would do differently is I would not trust price tags. In the very beginning, I would see something that was brand new with the tags, and if it had an expensive retail price on it, I would automatically buy it because I would think that I could resell it for really good money. But just because something has an expensive price tag does not mean that it will sell for even even close to the price on the tag. And if you pay up for something just because it has an expensive price tag, you run the risk of losing money on that item if you don't do the research first. I remember there was one time I was at a thrift and I almost bought a pair of jeans. I can't even remember the brand name. I almost bought this pair of jeans that was brand new with the tags. They were priced at $129. Now again, I used to sell jeans all the time, I was very familiar with some of the most popular brands and I had never heard of this brand before. Now, Goodwill wanted me to pay $29.99 for this pair of jeans just because it was brand new with tags and it was priced at $129 retail. But luckily, I had the fortitude to look it up on eBay and those jeans were actually selling for, get this, $10 plus shipping. So had I not looked that up, I would have paid $30 for a $10 pair of jeans. You cannot trust the price tags that you see because resale value is what matters. Just because a retail store thinks that they can sell a pair of jeans for $129, that doesn't matter. What matters is what people are paying for it on the platform you intend to sell it on, like eBay. So you would need to go to eBay and search that identical item to see what people are actually paying for it. And in this case, 
was a $10 pair of jeans with a $129 price tag. I'll give you another example of something that was brand new that was not selling for anything close to what the tag price was. Last month in the month of April, I had a huge sales day. I actually achieved $2,000 in sales in 24 hours. I did a video all about the items that sold for me during those 24 hours, and I'll link that video up here if you missed it but I had a limited edition rose gold sonic toothbrush and the price tag on them was $269. And you can imagine how disappointed I was to find out that they were selling for only $125 on eBay. Now, not saying that $125 isn't something to shake a stick at on eBay. It is, however, quite a bit different than the $269 price sticker that was on that toothbrush. Do not trust price tags. Always look up comps. Something else I would do differently is I would not get so easily offended by lowball offers. When I first started doing best offer on my listings years ago, I would become overly offended anytime someone would send me what's referred to as a lowball offer or an insulting offer on an item that you're selling. I would become so offended by these lowball offers that I stopped doing offers entirely just because I didn't wanna to have to deal with these people. But now, accepting offers has become such a crucial part of my reselling model that I can't imagine not having offers on my listings at all because all I can do is think back to the years where I was not accepting offers, thinking about how many potential sales I lost just because I didn't entertain the idea because I was so annoyed with lowball offers. Instead, think of lowball offers as an opportunity because after all, a buyer is inquiring about buying your product and not someone else's. So even a lowball offer is an opportunity to make a sale, which here's a little sidebar tip. Never decline an offer. In my experience, declining offers is the worst thing you can do always counter them. Even if someone sends you a ridiculously low offer, and I myself have had some ridiculous offers, especially lately, I have had people send me $1 and free shipping offers. Even those, I don't decline, I counter back. Counter back about five cents under my asking price, but I counter back nonetheless. Also, this is considered activity in your eBay store, which could do nothing but help you. So even if you get a low ball offer, instead of being annoyed or feeling inconvenienced or flat out being pissed off about it, be grateful that someone is giving you the opportunity to have activity in your eBay store to possibly trigger even more sales. Even if that sale isn't of the item that you received an offer on. Because I believe that even getting an offer on an item can trigger more sales and other items you have available. Something else that I would do differently is I would limit the death piles that I have in my house. So if you're unfamiliar with what a death pile is, a death pile is kind of a, a term that was coined by resellers as having a pile of merchandise that you originally purchased for resale, but yet you've been putting it off so long, it's just sitting in a pile in your house and you're absolutely dreading touching it, looking at it, or listing it. And in the beginning, I had numerous death piles all over my house and I did not realize the hurt that those death piles was actually doing to me and my business. Because having piles of merchandise can lead to stress and it can also lead to you overbuying and overspending your capital. Because let's say you've spent $500 on merchandise that is now just sitting in a corner not wanting to be dealt with because the pile is so intimidating. So you just keep going and spending more money on merchandise when you have plenty to list already, you just simply don't want to look at it. So those death piles are causing unneeded stress and they could potentially be causing you to spend more money on inventory. Because a lot of us really like the hunt, right? That's one of the reasons why I ended up having so many death piles in the beginning was because I loved the hunt. I loved going and finding the items that I knew I'd be able to sell for profit, but you get that initial rush when you first find the product and then you buy it knowing you can make a profit on it, but 
you get that rush and then it fades away so quickly, the item just ends up in a death pile. So when you find a good deal like that, you have this reaction triggered in your brain and you almost feel like you already made that profit. And then when it's gone, you want to go get it again. You want that rush, that chemical in your brain of making money. So you go look for more things, but you never actually listed the item and made the profit. You just got a rush from it. And that's how death piles are made. And so if I were starting over today, I would be very, very careful about overbuying. So now it's really easy for me to currently overbuy because I buy so much in bulk. I will buy pallets of thousands of items all at once. So obviously it's going to take me a little bit of time to get all of those items listed. But I actually had more death piles years ago when I was sourcing one-off items from the thrifts than I do now by buying thousands of products all at once. And it's just because I liked going out and picking individual items and I would pick more items than I could realistically list. And that's how death piles start. If you buy 200 items every single week, but you can never seem to list more than 100, you're always going to have a surplus of merchandise that just gets pushed off to the next week, and then you go sourcing again, and then that pile just keeps growing and building and building, and then before you know it, you have a huge mound of stuff that's stressing you out, and it's basically wasted capital. And now the last thing I wanted to talk about is the one thing that I would not do differently. I were starting over today, I would still do exactly what I did years ago, and that is starting small and building your way up. If I were starting over today, there is no way that I would be taking $5,000 and buy multiple pallets from a liquidation company. If I were starting over today, I would not buy a thousand of one individual product. If I were starting over today, I would not overwhelm myself with more inventory than I could realistically list on eBay. Start small. 14 years ago, I started with only 20 dollars and I bought small and I sold small and I learned as I went because being a reseller is a learning process. Nobody starts reselling knowing exactly the kind of merchandise to buy to make big money. Nobody just quits their job and is suddenly able to replace their full-time income overnight. It is a learning process. So do not be afraid of starting small. I truly believe that all of my previous experience in starting small has led me to the point where I am today. I don't feel like my reselling experience would be where it is now if not for all of the small steps that I took over the last 14 years of learning. It's okay to start small. You don't have to dive in and take $5,000 and start buying merchandise. Like I said, I started with only $20 and a couple of trash bags of clothing to flip on eBay. You have to start somewhere. You don't have to start big. As a matter of fact, I always recommend that everybody start small because that way if you mess up, you're not losing a huge chunk of money. Trust me, I've been there. I would much rather take a $20 hit than a $3,000 hit. Yeah, I've taken a $3,000 hit before. Didn't feel good. Because you have to learn that markets fluctuate, prices change, and so you need to learn how to develop and hone in on your reselling skills. And it's a lot easier to do that when you've started small and you're building your way up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video and videos like it, please give it a thumbs up. That way I know it. If you're interested in learning how to start a reselling business, make sure to hit subscribe and ring the notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. Don't forget to check the video description. I will put a lot of useful information in there for you. And please do also leave any questions or comments down in the comments below. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you with my next video. Bye-bye.